Good day, everyone. Welcome back to the show. I'm Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at NBA players who actually admit that Michael Jordan was destroying him. And if you wonder why I feature Michael Jordan so often on my show, hey, I just love Michael Jordan and I'm not afraid and not ashamed of it, okay? So let's have a look what NBA players say about Michael Jordan and their experiences. Now the first player that we're actually going to take a look at is Grant Hill with a pretty recent clip. I just found it a couple of weeks ago and I think it's a very interesting story about Grant Hill and Michael Jordan in his twilight years. Your Jordan story before we take a break. So Jordan, I'm playing in Orlando. It's his last year. We play them in Orlando first and I'm blocking his shot. Like I'm locking him up. Like oh, he, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm doing my thing again. I blocked his shot like three or four times. Oh, Like I'm having my way against him defensively. Now granted, he's 40 years old, but uh, I'm feeling good about myself. So uh, fast forward a month later, we're in DC. Uh, my ankle, we, we go to a doctor in Baltimore and basically he tells me I'm done. Like my ankles, you know, once again, it's, it's not healed, it's broken. I have to have surgery. But I wanted to play against Jordan one last time. And so we're playing the Wizards. It's a TNT game. Wait, Thursday don't you night. want to go out where you dominate him? Yeah, and you're blocking I mean, his well, shots. I'm just thinking, you know, my ego. Like oh, I'm thinking, like okay. I had him the last game. Yeah. I, I don't need this left <laughs> ankle. Just give me some. Like, give me some. I only uh, need Motrin. one ankle. Give me yeah. a bunch of Motrin. Okay. I'm gonna go out here. And when I tell you, he torched me in that first quarter. Like literally, he gave me 20 points in the first quarter on the same play. Like he just ran the same play every time and did this. Like you know, and I could not guard him. And so. Literally, I, I checked out of the game at the end of the first quarter, and I didn't even go to the bed. I just walked back to the locker room. <laughs> like, I was done. Like, literally had surgery, like, a couple days later. But it was like, I wanted to guard Jordan one last time. And you're right, I shouldn't have. I should have just let that go. Did he know you were a wounded animal? He probably did, because he went at me every day. And he didn't the care. the same move. Like, it wasn't, he didn't do anything different. It was the same, and I had nothing for him. Jordan probably had your x-rays in the locker room. He probably did. He probably knew exactly. I'm surprised he didn't send somebody for me to come back out. <laughs> <laughs> now, the next player that we're going to take a look at is Reggie Miller, who has so many great and especially funny Michael Jordan stories. But that one in particular is one of my favorite Reggie and Jordan story. Um, now let me let me go back to last week. You were going to tell me about trash talking with Jordan, and said to remind you to bring that back up. It was an, a preseason game. A Chuck person said you need to go out there and uh, give Jordan grief right away. Establish yourself. Is that what happened? Well, remember now. Let's set this up. Preseason, as we said, for veterans, it's more for veteran players. It's more for getting in shape and trying to get your routes and your timing done. You really don't play a lot of minutes. It was my rookie year, so most rookies play anywhere from 30 minutes to almost 40 minutes most of the game because they don't know any better. So we're playing in some <laughs> exhibition game somewhere in Idaho or North Dakota where you play most of these obscure uh, preseason games, at, and we're playing Michael Jordan, the Chicago Bulls. Now, of course, he's still Michael Jordan because Michael's three years older than I am, but he wasn't Michael Jordan with the music behind him like he is now. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you like that. And uh, I'm having a good first quarter because obviously we're guarding one another. And he's going through the motions because veterans really aren't going hard. And Chuck Person is egging me on saying, tell him to take that. Yeah, tell him he can't check you. Tell him he's all that. And I'm looking at Chuck like, I really don't want to talk noise to Michael Jordan. But, hey, maybe I'm trying to establish myself a little bit. So I go ahead and he eggs me on and I say a few things to him. Next thing I know... Michael looks over to Doug. Doug Collins, who was the head coach at the time, now my compadre at TNT, and says, leave me in. That's all he said. <laughs> leave me in. Well, next thing I know, we were up by 16 points going into the third quarter. They, I had like 12. Michael had two. By the end of the game, I had 12 and he had 35. <laughs> And I remember walking off the court, and he looked at me, and this is all he said. Don't ever talk to me. That's all he says. Like, don't ever talk to me again. And even though for the next 17 years, he and I were cordial and cool, minus the fight, he's right. I never did talk noise to him again. You never, ever said anything. 
From one NBA legend to the other, this one is about Dominique Wilkins and his experience of Michael Jordan in the locker room. Check it out. His attitude, his mentality, um, he, was a, he was a killer. You know, he wanted to take your heart out. I will never forget this. I never had a player to do this. So I remember going, us going to Chicago. Now we're in suit and tie. We're sitting in the locker room. We just walked in the locker room. Now remember, Michael Jordan walks into our locker room suit and tie. I'm like, what the hell is he doing in our locker room? Is he coming to, you know, to the training room? Well, what's going on? So he walks by me. He walks by Kevin. We get to Randy with me. He said, lace him up. It's going to be a long night. I'm like, did he just come in our locker room? <laughs> I didn't know what to say. I was shocked. He had 60 that night. He had 60 points that night. We ended up winning the game, but the, the scoring performance he put on that night was incredible. Man, I just love that story. So the next one is about Rex Chapman. If you don't know who Rex Chapman was, he was one of the best three-point shooters and also a great dunker. Yes, a great dunker back in the late 1980s and early 1990s. And he was actually good friends with Michael, but of course he also had his situations. Check it so out. So everybody's like, you were talking so much <laughs> noise to Jordan. I was like, no, I was not doing that. <laughs> And then you go off for yeah, 39. We, yeah, we only had eight guys. We made a big trade, eight guys available. And I think Michael and Scotty and Dennis and those guys came down to South Beach the night before. Uh -oh. And we're like, it's a <laughs> night off. <laughs> At, but as Jimmy Lynham always used to say uh, to us, you let a guy get going in this league and you got a problem. And I got it going one night and we got lucky. But you don't, there's no, Jordan doesn't say, anything like is there just uh, it's your night I'm gonna uh, let you have your yeah, night. now they they were did you beat them we beat them we beat them and uh you know they were they were not happy we played them a few weeks later at home and again michael and i are buddies we same agent ball goes up and we're around the jump circle and bang right to my chest <laughs> right to my chest and i went all right, great. You know, let, let's do it. I mean, that's the that's the mindset you have to have. But right then and there, I knew was not I was not having thirty nine again. <laughs> I think I went four for fourteen for fourteen points yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. Now the next story is from Ray Allen, yes, aka Jesus Shuttlesworth. Oh, just love that movie. He got game. Anyway, he has a story of Michael Jordan and him in his rookie season, which is also pretty interesting. So have a look. Mike wanted to kill you. Mm -hmm. Was he mean to you? No, he wasn't. He actually killed me slowly. And uh, <laughs> yeah, he he would comment to the coach. He's actually doing a great job out here. And meanwhile, he's born in forty five. <laughs> Wait, he's talking uh, to your coaches? Yeah, I remember uh, Chris Ford, he's he's yelling at me. Chris Ford's yelling the whole time. He's like, rookie, get in front of him, get in front of him. And I'm fronting him on the post, and MJ just kind of slowly kind of glides across the floor, and he gets the ball and shakes and scores. And I did everything the game plan said, and then there's a breaking action. We're sitting there, and, you know, Chris Ford is just down there just – hammering me and MJ was like he, he's doing a great job coach. he's actually doing a great job <laughs> meanwhile he's got 45 on the books so I was like yeah so the last story that we're going to feature in today's video is of OJ Mayo yes he's not a true NBA legend but hey he had a good run in the NBA and he had an experience with Michael Jordan when he was very very young and yeah another lesson why you shouldn't trash talk Michael but nobody learns for whatever reason check it out I'm going to start with this question. What possessed a young man going into the 11th grade to talk smack to Michael Jordan at Michael Jordan's camp? Um, uh, well, uh, I happened to uh, be the only high school uh, player there. You know, it was mainly a uh, freshman in college. And so, uh, you know, he came on the court and he guarded me. So instantly I was like, man, he must think I'm the, you know, not, not the strong link over here. And so, uh, I got it going a little little bit, and obviously, uh, it's any any ball player's dream to play against Mike. And uh, I couldn't tell you how many times I did his move uh, after the finals the next day in the rec center and stuff. So I got a few buckets in the, and I think the, uh, the campers knew I was the only high school kid, and so uh, they got rowdy a little bit, and uh, we got a little bit of John, and so uh, you know we played two games. I think we uh, we split one on one. It was team game, and then. Uh, he said, okay, now let me handle my business. And he looked me in my face and said, I'm like, what you mean? So he said, I need all the campers, everybody to leave, let's clear the gym. 
I said, oh man, you know, so uh, we uh, continue playing pickup and, uh, you know, uh, Mike was Mike. <laughs> All right, you guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also leave a like if you like this video. And I hope to see you next time. Peace. I'm out.